What is that like flying private? I, I would love to know. Dude, oh my god. So I think this year I think I've spent over 100k on jets. <laughs> it's it's March, bro. I know, but <laughs> um, so like my so let's let's go through it. My girl flew with all of her friends from Tally to Miami. That was private, and then um, I when I came back from you Canada, flew them in. Just were, them? were you even on that just, one? No, they were in Tally and they came to Miami. Crazy. Bro, they flew back regular. Yeah. But like, was, <laughs> when all the girls get there, are they just like, "This is God." Like, uh, honestly, because and they're college Tal- girls, yeah. bro. They Tallahassee what? girls because they're not Miami girls. Like, yeah, but just know. college so girls. Like, yeah. yeah, so they were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, a little bit, which was cool. I mean, like, they all got pics and shit. Like, that, that's what it's for. And honestly, I was gonna fly them all out anyway. It was like another. It was an extra two grand to go private. Damn, you know what I mean? Like, okay, like, instead of just buying them all, all tickets. Yeah, yeah, I see. And then, so it's it's <clears> practical. So that was one. And then when I flew back from Canada to Miami, most like when I, cause I went away and then I came back, I flew private then. That was a long flight then, private. It was three hours. Yeah. So not too bad, but we had to stop in Pensacola and then Tally to pick up Aloe and then into Miami. Aloe? That's my girl. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I was thinking she loves Aloe on Twitter. No. <laughs> I like, I okay, so her, her full name is Alondra, and like, I didn't want to call her Aloe for a long time because of that. Because of him. Because if anyone knows, like, she loves Aloe, like, I've known him longer than I've known her, so every time I said Aloe, I was just thinking, like, damn. Yeah. Anyway. And then. He loves Aloe. Um, there and back to Puerto Rico, and then uh, most recently from LA to Miami. Private. Yeah. That had to be the most expensive. No, actually, the Puerto Rico one was way more expensive. What? Oh, because okay. there's no, there's no. Technically. Well, yeah, it's it's because like when you're mainland, like jets can kind of just like move around really easily. But to like make the trip out to Puerto Rico, like it, yeah. it's like costly for the jet, even though it's like a two hour flight. But dude, Bro. okay, so I think you guys should do it next time. You guys have like a client ascension thing, like a meeting Fly in like private. London. It would probably it would probably cost you. It'd be pretty expensive to go to London. But from here to like New York, like you fly into Teterboro, it would cost you like, that'd be like 20K. And if you split four ways, make Trina pay some too. <laughs> um, Dude, that's like, nice. but for 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 us uh, lower echelon folk. But you're not though. Flying business class is still like fucking dope. But you're not lower echelon. But it's you just go to. Well, to how much How much were the business class tickets to London? Like three grand each. Three grand a piece. I mean, if you look at it that way, it's that's actually two more cheap. grand a piece per person. Yeah, that was cheap business class. Were they class. nice business class? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was Jet Blue, Jet but Blue. it was brand new business class. And okay. they were like nicer than the ones I've flown before, like Emirates and Turkish. But now you can't even go back. Like economy would make you want to shoot yourself. Oh, dude, I would never. That's like, what I'm I, saying. I would just never do it. Like, like business class to you is just like, oh, whatever. I'll still do that. Like, I, like, listen, I understand it's it's not the greatest financial decision of all time to fly yeah. private, but like, it's extremely convenient. And like, if it's a thing, are there any like, upsides? Like, you meet anyone like flying no. private, or is it just That's straight the best up just part, like you don't meet anyone? <laughs> you don't, <laughs> you don't see like, anyone. Soul. Here's the thing, right? So, like, for me to fly from Miami to New York, I have to get because Miami airport's always jammed. Yeah. It's the worst airport. You have to get there at least two hours early. Yeah. Like if you're flying at any normal time, like you have to, it's an hour through security Jeez. and then you have to walk to the gate, wherever the fuck that is. And Miami International is just one long terminal. It's not like Dude, quick I to hate get there. That airport. Like you yeah. might have to walk like a mile and a half to get to like the terminal you want to get to. <laughs> so then you're there, you're boarding and then everyone's like, oh, there's a crying baby. Oh, the baby needs to you know throw up. So the baby throws up. We can't take off until the flight attendant cleans up. <laughs> what? And then- like they like do the whole fucking thing for everybody and then you like get up in the air and then you're flying and then you land and then it takes like a minute to get off and then you're walking through and you have to go get your bag dude for me to fly same way so that's like that's like a whole day thing yep from miami it, we go opalaka to teterboro it's like 20 minute drive to the airport if your flight's at noon you get there you can get there at 1201 they will wait for you yeah i was gonna say <laughs> there's no boarding time like, you are the boarding yeah they're not gonna leave without you like you're the <laughs> you're, you're the cargo you know yeah I mean? yeah so you get there at 1201. They're like, yo, your flight was like t- like a minute ago. And <laughs> and you're like, sorry. And they go, it's all right. Do you want coffee? They give you fucking coffee. They like take all your bags. They um they like load it up onto the plane. They're like, have you done this before? And we're like, yeah, just skip the fucking spiel. And they're like, okay. <laughs> they get in the air immediately. You land. They 
so if you reserve ground transport, they'll just pull you up to the fucking car. The guy will like the the sec, uh, the co-pilot or whatever will like get the bags out of the plane, put them in the back of the truck, and you leave. It's so That's convenient, it. bro. It's so convenient, and I just like also like I just don't like airports. Like they make me like kind of it kind of stress me a little bit. Like I also I just hate going through TSA because I don't know what I have on me. I have no mm. idea. You know what I mean? Like, what if they find something that I didn't even know I had? That's me every time I go like across the border. I get so nervous. <laughs> like whippets. <laughs> on the cross the border? Yeah, same shit. Like, yeah. that's why I hate Dude, going across the border. going, like, land, crossing on the highway into Canada is the scariest thing ever. Because the about Montreal. the people at the border will be like, where are you coming from? Where are you going? Who's your who's your aunt? What's your aunt's name? What do you do for work? It's like you're, like, it's afraid to aunt. mess like, it up. bro, I'm scared. I'm nervous. <laughs> no, I know. Like, dude, yeah, they, they talk to you like they have all the time in the world, even though there's, like, 500 cars behind <laughs> yeah. you. Like, do they even ask you questions if you fly international from Miami to Canada? Or are they just like this Oh, yeah, they have, guy? like, some, like, jolly guy come out. So that was the only time I ever flew international private, and they have some jolly guy come out with an iPhone. He's like, do you have a passport? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, where are you going? Miami. Cool, have fun. <laughs> and they leave you alone. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but dude, when you're flying domestic, like sometimes they don't even like make you show ID. You could be anybody. Like yeah. there's been times, where, okay, like sometimes they only have like two flights out a day. Um, and so like you walked up the airport and they're like, Mason? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, let's go. That's it. Let it's me know private. next time you're flying private, bro. Dude, Maybe, uh, yeah. I'll be Mason You'll for be Mason. You'll be Mason. It's worth it. I'm saying you guys should do it. Put it on the company card, get Daniel to sign off on it. <laughs> Yeah, and just down. like see see if you can just like I don't know man it's fun it's next cool. thing you know every I'm scared that if I chat. do it once like I'll never want to go back oh no that's the thing that's the it's problem like you, yeah, you, it's, yeah yeah it's really tough to like go back to flying like a even first class bro <laughs> dude first class domestic is like nothing it's just a bigger seat it's yeah, like exactly. it's not you're a not getting experience the little, the unless you get like a lay flat which is dope. yeah yeah lay flats are sick yeah you're those are that's toys. the only time it's worth it to upgrade uh -huh. I think. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this short clip, check out the full interview here. And if you want to see more clips from this episode, check it out right here.